the lore of the Pokemon universe is somewhat complicated as it doesn't simply span just over the video games but also expands into other media such as the fantastic Pokemon manga like the Pokemon Adventures one or the official anime however those aren't the only ones that are actually there and there's more interesting and unique things we can learn from the different mediums about the different characters and stories that have been brought to the Pokemon universe. So that's what we're going to look into with this series. This is the Pokemon character lore explained series. Here we will aim to go through each of the different Pokemon characters within all of their different mediums to fully explain the lore behind them and we'll attempt to do this in as a neat fashion as possible. And I thought why not start this off with one of my personal favorite characters, none else than Steven Stone himself. So that's what we're going to be doing today. First we're going to be covering the video game section as it is the one that most people are familiar with. Then we'll cover the manga and last but not least, the anime. So. Here we go. Steven Stone hails from the Hoenn region and specializes in steel type Pokemon. Steven's name is quite interesting however, as his last name is Stone which fits really well with Steven's incredible love for rare rocks and rare stones. Now his Japanese name is Daigo Suwabuki and this is actually a pretty cool name. As for how Steven looks in general, he mostly dons his light blue hair and wears a black and purple overcoat and has overall a very elegant look to him. Within the Hoenn region, he served as the champion in the Pokemon League during Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and returned as a champion for the remakes Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. As for his presence within the video games overall, well, he is found within the Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Omega Ruby and of course Alpha Sapphire video games. And also you can find him in Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver where you can run across him in the post game. We can also find him in Pokemon Emerald where he is no longer the champion as he has lost his title to Wallace who basically took his place as champion. And this is the theme that can be actually found a bit further into the history and lore when you look further into the manga but we're gonna get to that later. What is quite interesting is that Steven within the Pokemon Ruby Sapphire and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire video games is actually less interested in competing and more interested in just finding rare stones, hence why you find him a lot inside of different caves. Which is kind of interesting as he is also the son of the president of the Devon Corporation or Devon Corp, right? Which is basically a large corporation that produces products that are useful for different trainers and Pokemon. When you're playing Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, your first encounter with Steven will be in the Duford Cave, also known as the Granite Cave. You are sent to give him a letter from his father, Mr. Stone. You as the player will then the next time run to Steven on Route 100. 18. After that you once again meet him at Route 120 where he hands you the Devon Scope which was developed by the Devon Corporation. This basically allows you to enter the gym by revealing the hidden Kecleon as that's what this Devon Scope does. Sometime later you will also visit Steven's house in Moss Deep City and here you'll receive the HM08 which is Dive. The next time Steven shows up is after the events in the Cave of Origin. He shows up waiting outside of Sotopolis' gym and thanks you the player for doing a good job. This is the last time you see Steven until you finally battle him at the Elite Four where he serves as the champion of the Hoenn League. Next up is the Emerald game. He also spends time looking for rare stones and rocks in this game as well and you can find him in the Meteor Falls after defeating the champion who basically took his spot which was Wallace. If you find him here you can battle him and he'll have a much more difficult and stronger team to defeat. A pretty cool thing though is that at the end of Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald when you become the champion, if you head to Steven's home in Moss Deep City, you will find a note and a Beldum at his house in the city. As Steven has basically mentioned that Beldum is his favorite Pokemon, hence why he left one for you to take. But this event also implies that he has left the region and headed out into the world and we know this because of his age within the Gen 3 games which is about 25, whereas in Heart Gold Soul Silver where he also shows up it's about 28. And then in Pokemon Black, White and Black and White 2, it's around 33 to 43 in age. Which explains why you can encounter him in the future games like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where he introduces himself as the champion of Hoenn, implying that he still is perhaps either set in a different alternative universe where he hasn't been defeated yet, or that he went on his journey slightly before you run into him and defeated him within the Generation 3 games. And since in Emerald he lost to Wallace, which is different from Ruby and Sapphire, we can assume alternative timelines are the case here. However, within Heart Gold Soul Silver though, you can find him at the Pokemon Fan Club, where he is on his search for Latios and Latias. And he will tell you all about them. 
You can also run into him a tad bit later, and he will offer you either a green stone, red stone, or blue stone, and your choice will decide which Hoenn starter that he will give you. And the next time you run into him in Heart Gold Soul Silver is at the Pewter Museum, where he is at at the moment. After talking to him, he returns to the Silco building, if you do the whole Latias Latias event with him there, and then offers to trade the player a Beldum for a Fortress. So trading the signature Pokemon of his team for a Fortress, basically. So the general final encounter within Heart Gold Soul Silver is when you get your hands on the Enigma Stone, which is an exclusive event item which is necessary for the whole Latios and Latios event to take place that we mentioned previously. So you just go to Pewter's museum, you get him the stone, you show that to him, and then basically you can get yourself a Latios or Latias depending on which game you actually have. But there's also a mention of Steven from characters in some other games. For example, in Pokemon Platinum, when you are given the villa in the resort area, the person that basically gives it to you mentions that a man gave him the villa and that that man came from the Sinnoh region to collect rare stones. After collecting the stones, he wanted to basically leave afterwards, right? And the other mention of him is in Pokemon Black and White, where a tourist visits Undela Town during the summer and mentions Steven, basically explaining that he's quite a powerful Trainer who collects rare stones, and the final appearance of him is in Pokemon Black and White 2, where he shows up in the Pokemon World Tournament. And his most recent video game appearance is of course in the remakes Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where he mostly serves the same purpose of being there to give the players items along their journey and, you know, just kind of be a story element, the same way he is in Ruby and Sapphire. But during Oras, he's actually on a search for the secret of the Mega Evolutions, with his N Mega Metagross. Next for the video games outside of the mainline games where he does show up is Pokemon Masters, as he doesn't really make himself present in any more mainline games beyond that, since basically Aura for the most part. In Pokemon Masters though, he is sync paired with his trusted Metagross, and his story in Pokemon Masters has kind of a small event to it, and it's kind of interesting. He's basically hanging out with Wallace, who of course takes a spot as champion in Pokemon Emerald, but also in somewhat of the manga. But in Pokemon Masters, that event has actually not taken place yet, and he is still the champion. And he's also pretty much just crazy and in love with unique and rare stones and rocks and gems and all that sort of stuff once again. He also thwarts the evil team of the game and scares them by making them bring out like extra support and stuff to help them out, but he easily disposes of them with your help. But for the most part, his story here is just kind of like generic for the most part. He's just a guy who's the champion of the Hoenn region and really loves stones. And that's basically Pokemon Masters. So that was his journey within the video games, but what about Steven's teams? Well, as mentioned, Steven is a Steel-type user, and it shows within his team. See, in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, he uses a team featuring three Pokemon with the Steel-typing, and also has a lot of Rock-types, which fits really well with his love for rocks and rare stones. It, this team is basically featuring Skarmory, Claydol, Agron, Credilly, Armaldo, and Metagross. What is also shown here is that due to his love of rocks and constant exploration for them, it allowed him to basically get his hands on a lot of rare fossils, which then thanks to Devon Corporation, he could turn into full-on Pokemon. In Pokemon Emerald, his team is more or less the same as the champion battle team from Ruby and Sapphire, with possibly some level increases. The only other game where we see him using a full-on team is actually within Pokemon Black and White 2 during the World Tournament, where we mostly see him using the same team as he does in, you know, the previous games. However, here he actually adds a Excadrill and Archeops instead of Skarmory and Claydol to his team, which again seems to imply he found more rocks and fossils that he then turned into Pokemon for his team. And last but not least is his Oras team, which is mostly the same as his original game, but in the rematch he adds a Carbink and Aerodactyl to his team instead. So yeah, Steven clearly has an obsession with rocks and stones, which makes sense since stone is literally in his name, and well, it just makes sense overall. And since it's Oras, he does have a Mega Metagross, of course. And in the Battle Mansion, he will always use an Aerodactyl and a Metagross with the Metagrossite so he can Mega Evolve. So that is all for the video game version of Steven, however next is the manga, and here we have specifically the Pokemon Adventures manga. See, he first appeared in the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire chapters of the manga itself, where he once again serves as the champion of the Hoenn region. But what is interesting here is that he actually took the title of champion away from Wallace within the manga, and, he, and Wallace decided to basically go and serve as the gym leader of Satopolis. Once again in this story, he is the son of Mr. Stone, again the boss of the Devon Corporation. What is really cool 
cool actually within the manga is that the Devon Corporation alongside Steven try to do their best to stop the evil teams from trying to basically destroy and use these legendary Pokemon to their advantage by creating a submarine, the Explorer 1, that they use to travel to the seafloor cavern where they create a straight up seal to prevent the evil teams from being able to reach the legendaries. This submarine does end up getting stolen by Team Magma at a later point. But either way, within the manga he also appears in the Platinum chapters after the events of Ruby and Sapphire. Here he is spotted within the Sinner region trying to sell his villa after basically being there to collect a variety of stones within the Sinner region that were rare and, you know, special. Which literally is a callback to what we mentioned earlier about the villa in Platinum from the video games because this is actually a thing that's mentioned by the guy selling you the villa within Pokemon Platinum. And what's even more fun is that the villa is later bought by Platinum in the manga, which is who we play as in Pokemon Platinum. So yeah, it all kind of comes together. And the last chapter where Steven showed up is in the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire chapters, where Steven enlists the help of Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald to stop a meteoroid that is headed towards Earth to destroy it. Later on, he and his little group head to Mawile to an energy harvesting plant that was abandoned by a rival company of the Devon Corporation. They head there and get a machine they'll be able to use to be basically used to stop the meteoroid. Eventually, with everything they need and Rayquaza on their side, they destroy the meteoroid and restore everything to normal. After this point, Steven heads to the Kalos region alongside the Diancie, but this is actually in an alternate universe, so I'll explain this a bit later when we get into the teams, but this is the last we see on him for a while within the manga. So within the manga, his story is circled around the events of very similar things that you see in the video games, but as for his team in the manga, that's slightly different. Now, of course, for his team, Metagross is still present, as Steven has said that Beldum is his favorite Pokemon. But what is cool in the manga is that he actually has the Metagross that can Mega Evolve, but also several Beldum and also several Metang as well. And for a short while, he also borrowed Mumu, which is a Swampert that's owned by Ruby, while Ruby was away on the Southern Island. But that's not all though, because you see, Steven's love for Steel-type Pokemon doesn't stop just there. See, we also got his hands on a Registeel that he awakened to use against Groudon and Kyogre's incredible power, but here's a little spoiler and a twist, so skip forward if you don't want you know, this to be spoiled for you, this part of the Ruby and Sapphire chapters from the Adventures manga. But here's what we're gonna say though, as soon as the battle is over, Steven actually dies from having strained himself too much in the battle as he had been, you know, using his, all his power to control the legendaries. Now you might be confused by that because, well, you know, really, is he dead? Well, yeah, he is. The power was too strong and that's basically what happens. So you might be wondering, well, how does he appear in the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire chapters if he died? in the Ruby and Sapphire chapters. That doesn't make any sense. Well, the reason for this is because, see, Celebi actually brings the characters Ruby and Sapphire to an alternate timeline where Steven actually had managed to survive the battle. But back in the original timeline, Steven's death actually inspired Wallace to don the mantle of champion in honor of Steven's memory. So yeah, sort of depressing to be honest, but yeah, Steven actually dies within the Ruby and Sapphire chapters, but then he is still alive in an alternate timeline, which Ruby and Sapphire go to, where they still find him alive and he didn't die from the events of that battle. So that was the manga. But what about the last medium, the anime? Well, here we have an interesting set of things. See, first up has got to be the official anime, where Steven once again has the same backstory for the most part as one you've seen prior. But here is a one big difference. See, he's never mentioned to have been the Hoenn League champion within the main anime, where instead Wallace serves as the champion of the region, more or less. But this is only in the first few seasons where he shows up. An interesting fact actually is that Steven had the longest time between his first and second appearance in the anime. There was actually a incredible 642 episodes between Steven's first and second appearance in the anime, which is the longest for any human character to appear between first and second time. And in the anime, he's mostly seen in the Ruby and Sapphire season, where he's just having a good old time looking for stones for the most part. But in the X and Y season, he shows up for the Mega Evolution special episodes, where he battles Elaine using a shiny Mega Metagross. And what is cool is that if you as the player have Steven's shiny Beldum in Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire the video games, he will make a nod towards Elaine in the games with, you know, Mega Charizard X, which is pretty cool. But in this season of the 
the anime though, compared to the Ruby and Sapphire season, they confirm that he is the champion of the Hoenn region within X and Y. And beyond that, he shows up in several episodes in the Kalos, you know, anime, where he oftentimes teams up with other characters in battle, like even with Ash in one case. But overall, as a character within the X and Y series, he's mostly the same as the Steven you've seen from the games and the manga, being very interested in collecting stones and being overall reserved and quite an elegant trainer in general. Now for his team though, see within the official series, what we know is this, in the Ruby and Sapphire season, he has an Aaron, Agron, and that is mostly it whenever the, you know, trainers Ash and the gang run into him in Granite Cave. But then we have something different though, which is shiny Metagross that can mega evolve, and that one is in the X and Y one. And we can't forget to mention that the two appearances of Steven in the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire animated trailer are also shown where he battles Brendan with his Metagross. And of course, the Pokemon Masters trailer, where once again he uses the Metagross while teaming up with Cynthia and lands to take on Karina, Charon, and Misty in the big stadium in the Pasio region. So as for his team in the anime, what we know is this. He's got Aaron, Agron, and a shiny Metagross. And that's mostly what we've seen there. And there it is, that is the general story of Steven Stone. So let's break it all down. Steven has a massive love for rare stones, and his favorite type are steel types, and he's often catching them, and has loads of them already in his team. He is also a charismatic but quite reserved trainer that uses elegant moves in battle. He also traveled the world in search of rare rocks, and during his journey discovered a lot of amazing things, for example like a lot of fossil Pokemon. His team oftentimes contains loads of fossil Pokemon, and his signature Pokemon is Metagross, along with his pre-evolutions. And that is pretty much it for the lore of Steven Stone. If I missed anything that you guys think was important to mention, feel free to comment it down below. But that is it for today's video, guys. I will do more of these videos if you guys do enjoy them, so drop a like down below. If we can maybe get this video to a thousand likes, that would be fantastic, because at a thousand likes, you can expect to see another video covering some other trainers, gym leaders, Elite Four, etc. from the Pokemon universe, and just going through their history and lore and explaining it all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen.